Our goal here today, get this cabin moved, and then we've got seven pergolas. Like, we've got a lot of work ahead of us in a very short amount of time. boys and girls we are back in one of my favorite places actually we're at camp tracy here in uh just east of salt lake city utah up in the canyons this is a boy scout camp and if you remember if you saw our videos a couple months ago we came up here and picked up the old uh, railroad cabooses we picked up a cabin we picked up a bunch of miscellaneous stuff and then this job kind of got postponed because a we bought that big you know batch of stuff up in colville that we just barely got done with and B, we were waiting for the power company to come over and disconnect the power from these cabins before we could move them. So they've done that. We are now free to be able to come and work on this. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us in a very short amount of time. And now the weather's starting to change, fall's coming, which means snow's coming very soon. And we gotta get this done before then. So our goal here today, get this cabin moved, got another cabin that needs to get moved, hopefully today as well. And then we've got seven pergolas, like kind of a outdoor timber framed uh, gazebo looking things. Then we need to get out of here and then we need to pull up our makeshift bridge that we made. If you guys remember that, crossing the river over there, we gotta pull our big timber mats up. And then we gotta go through and basically clean everything up. Any trash and stuff we're gonna haul off, trees and stuff like that, we're going to kind of put back to a natural uh, place. Originally our plan was to come up and chip all the uh, trees and stuff to kind of make just a mulch. The camp said that's not a big deal, they don't really care. In fact, they would prefer that we take some of the trees that have uh, gone down and just scatter them kind of throughout so that they can just kind of decompose naturally and also to keep people from, you know, discourage people from coming through here with cars and stuff because this is all private property and they don't want people in here. Instead of our big excavator, the Sandy 265, we've got our Sandy 155, which is much more nimble here in these trees. It's got the uh, CMP grapple on it, which is probably my favorite tool that we own. That thing is freaking awesome. It goes through and we can just kind of pick up and gently maneuver uh, really any sort of object very precisely. So that's gonna help us uh, tremendously. We've got the Minotaur, our uh, skid loader over there, the, the absolute beefcake. And then we have our Sani uh, Telehandler. So between those three machines and our trucks and trailers, and Rob and Jose and the rest of the gang, we should be able to make uh, pretty quick work of this. This cabin was already prepped last time we were here. We got it off the foundation, disconnected everything. Now the power's disconnected. We should be able to get some slings on here and get this thing lifted and uh, go to town. So I know you guys have already seen us up here before, but this video is gonna be significantly different because now we're moving full-blown structures and uh, we've got different equipment up here and we're trying to leave the place looking clean and tidy as possible. Before we even get started, I just wanted to do a big shout out to Boy Scouts of America. The local district here has been awesome to work with. They just, you know, trusted us to be able to come in here and do our, our job and, and not, you know, micromanage us. And, and it's worked out really well. So a uh, huge shout out to those guys. They've been awesome. Jeremy and Ethan, um, the camping directors and the camp ranger, just great people and a great organization. So sad to see this, the camp kind of downsizing, but it is what it is. And at least they're uh, staying on top of the maintenance and the management and making sure that this place stays safe for whatever the future holds for it. So with that said, Let's do some work. Also, I got burnt. The stacks on the on the Kenworth. That's the one downside of wearing uh, cut-off shirts is you get out and you hit the stacks, and that's the second time I've been uh, just completely roasted. I think before I got on the back of one of my arms. Also, you know, get out. I heard it break. You did. Did you catch it? Yeah, get some pressure on there, guys. I'm telling you right now, that machine lives up to the hype all the hype. I've always wanted a big metal tracks 15, 20,000 pound skid loader and the, the biggest machines that anybody's made yet are like 12 to maybe 14,000 pounds, like the Cat 299 and stuff. Case came out and they're like, here, hold my hydraulic fluid and let us build a 20,000 pound skid loader. 20,000 pounds. If you've been thinking about it, I highly recommend it. Until Sandy comes out with theirs, in which case I'm going to push you that way because these Sandy machines, I'm telling you guys, they're awesome. Like legit, some of the greatest equipment uh, I've ever operated. So we've got hands going down to finish the grading, start cleaning up down there. Rob and Jose are grabbing some timbers to shore up our supports there. And uh, we should be able to start lifting here in a minute and we're moving. What happened? 
No. Do you see it? Nothing there? But what something, would be... something got caught in my hair and then stung me when I tried to grab it out. Huh. Feels like something's still in my hair. Guys, we're gonna take a quick break from me bumping into things with a forklift, which is something that I do very well, by the way, because I'm thirsty. I need a little bit of a break from just regular tasting water, which is why we're gonna talk about Air Up, who is the sponsor of today's video. We've talked about them before. They make water fun. In here, just got regular water. I got some ice in here too. So you take one of their flavor pods, you put it on the spout, and literally tastes just like orange vanilla swirl. I don't even know how to like explain this to you guys clearly enough. It's not putting any sort of chemicals or additives or sugars or anything in my drink. What's happening is it's basically aerating the water. As I sip through this spout, there's a little hole right here that then lines up a little hole on this flavor pod and then that circulates air and water together and then basically what's happening is I'm tasting orange vanilla swirl because I'm smelling it. It's actually making me think that there's a flavor in this water when really there's not. Another cool thing about Air Up is they have a ton of different flavors. I've got like three right here on me, but they've got a ton, literally a box of different flavors that uh, you can choose from. So you're not stuck with the same flavor over and over. But you, my friends, are gonna give this a try because you're curious. I can see it in your eyes. So all you gotta do is click the link in my description below, use the promo code HEAVYD10 to get 10% off your whole order. Yeah. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Brake cleaner. <laughs> They're pissed. The one flew up into my hair up underneath. You couldn't even see it. He was still there. there. Well, well, I was saying, is it there? And you said no, and it was there, but still doing it. I got me. Got me. They are so mad. What a jerk. Look at me everywhere. I got bit like a hundred times. Pretty sure they're still all over me. After I backed away and threw up the white flag, they were like, send it in the cavalry, boys. Take this guy down. Yeah. Before we burn down the cavalry before we get it home? Yep. My favorite part of the day. Is it just me or the wasps been absolutely terrible this year? <laughs> Teamwork. God, they just keep coming back. I've been home in a long time. I'm not doing squat right now. Uh, we need water now. If there's any in there, they'll just die. It's like toxic gas. Yeah, I'm all the way over here. I think that that uh, bee was radioactive. Turned into a bee. Sleeping on the job, huh? What? No, I'm working very hard. Oh. Distributing my weight evenly, holding the deck down so it just doesn't leap up in the sky against gravity. Grab it. Don't eat oh. that, Alan. I'm gonna bury it. <laughs>
All right, we got uh, another cabin loaded. Pretty much damage free. cutting this pergola out I'll show you we're gonna be taking seven of these pergolas out of here which are really nice it doesn't look like they've been here very long maybe 10 years or so and uh, the camp doesn't need them anymore and so they'd like to get rid of them and so we're gonna figure out how to transport them obviously we won't be able to transport them like that because that's too big and too wide and too tall and too everything so I think the plan is to try to take the legs off but we're gonna see what Robin Hood they it is possible Probably oh, back into one piece and rebuilding with the same parts, maybe not. Maybe uh, cut it right here. Be nice to actually cut it right where the beams are right there. This little cover, pull this cover off and it should then rest flat on the trailer. I've gotten worse. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, that's 16 oh, from here to here. Bit. It's actually 16, 17, 18 and a little bit. Wide. We should be able to tip it up. If we cut the legs off, tip it up a little bit. Because this is, we probably transport it like we did to the deck for your treehouse. The legs want to come off for sure? Yeah, right. definitely. You want to cut them or try to dis dismantle it? Cut it. Dismantling it, we're gonna... Yeah, yeah cut you're it gonna right here. It. Right here across yeah. on all four Where's corners. There? This unbolts, I believe. So we've got the Peterbilt that we're gonna load. Well, we can load this on there. This would actually ride pretty well on the Peterbilt, depending on how much we decide to tip it. It might not even need to. It might be able to transport it full width. It's under 20. <laughs> <laughs> what are we laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Very good. You got any chunks of wood we can screw down? Uh, we come down. Let's put some wood up where the right where the sling is hitting those shingles, and we'll just screw it to the top of the roof. Okay, so cut it down like two inches from there because it probably won't be very, I don't know how straight it's gonna be. It don't matter, we can fix it later. We ain't gonna get anywhere with that chain. Ah. It's just cutting at a weird angle. It's just the, the blade is just flopping like you wouldn't believe. Great shot. <laughs> Whoa, yep. Need more. Got a lift. That's what I thought. Good night.
grab that should be on the floor there. Spin it and then I'll grab it with the legs. Just a little up, a little up. And back in. Oh. Okay, down. Down. I think we're in. That's all like resting on the beam. We might not shove some wood underneath. See how that one is doing over there. Kind of right there and strap it down inside the trailer and then lift this up. Good. Lift this thing up and just unscrew the, the bottom of those. Well, I'm saying to tip it. Because if we put that. We tip it, we have to tip it a lot. Who's that width? You could just drag it this way a little bit, strap that side to the side of the trailer, and then just grab this side and tip until we see what it does. Because that's pretty damn yeah, wide. That. We're barely on right there. Here we but... go, have him. Dig. Oh, that's, that's fine if you're gonna lift up, I guess. Don't come back towards you. You gotta go out a little bit. Whoa. What about? A little more. A little more. A little more. Well, they're right there at the edge. Okay. How's that? That's it. Okay. Well, you could go up another foot and not go any higher on your real elevation. Huh. Up. Up more. Right there. Now you got a flat surface. I like that. Well, I got it starting to get a little tight. Hold it temporarily so I can get other beams. Is that where you're going to have it? No. You're going to come down farther? It can be right there, it's fine. 75 inches.
Well, that's it. We've got cabin loaded. We've got one pergola loaded. We've got a bunch of stuff cleaned up. We've got bleachers, we've got timbers. We collected a bunch of stuff for being our first day back on this job in over you know, a month and a half or so. I feel like we got a lot of stuff done. Um, next time we come back up, we got a smoother process, ready to be able to roll things in and out of here uh, much more efficiently. As you can see, Alan basically built a lean-to to be able to hold this pergola roof on the trailer. This is the biggest roof, I believe. I think there may be one or two more this size, but we know we can transport the size. Uh, the rest are smaller, so easier to move. And hopefully the next ones we can put maybe two per roof, uh, two per trailer, a smaller one than a bigger one. I don't know, we'll see. But that's that for today. And uh, we're gonna head home and go eat. Mm -hmm.